I will uh, call the meeting to order. Public Safety Building Committee meeting Monday, December 3rd. It's 6.32 uh, p.m. I do not expect Mr. Rooney and Mr. Goodney may uh, join us at this point. Uh, first action item is approval of meeting minutes from November 14th, 2018. Any comments, questions? Just as usual, that you're right. Yeah. All right, then I will move uh, that we accept the minutes as written by Mr. Lyons. Is there a second? Okay. Second by Mr. Wood. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And I see one abstention is All right, uh, Chairman's update. So as you know, at the last meeting, uh, we discussed the uh, lack, the potential lack of replies on the solar canopies. Um, that did come to fruition that there were absolutely no replies after our meeting. Um, so that same night, the Board of Selectmen had a meeting and we had kind of taken two votes of how we were gonna proceed depending upon um, what happened. Uh, so given that there were no votes, the Selectmen basically ratified our vote um, for to spend approximately $350,000 to construct the canopies um, you know, as originally planned with the planning board. Uh, the one thing that we did ask after that, uh, and we still have the option, and you'll, we'll, we'll discuss this further when we get down into the potential change orders, because the solar canopy is actually in the change order packet tonight, is um, we could certainly reduce the size of the, the canopies. Um, and I believe there was a question posed to uh, myself as chair of like, whether that was an option. So uh, we did investigate it with uh, the help of Vertex and CTA. And if you remove approximately 30% of that canopy as currently constructed, so there's 19 spots now, remove 30%, that gets you down to 13. <coughs> um, you would save about 25% of the cost, which is about $75,000. So not a small dollar amount. So let me just outline the facts as I know them, um, and I'll certainly defer to Chief Paulus if anyone has any questions on the operations. They currently have 12 police cruisers. The space needs um, study, which for any of those of you that were not on the Public Safety Study Committee, we took many votes um, to support the space needs study and not alter the needs of the department. That called for 15 spots, okay? We're building with 19 spots. So if you cut 30%, which is like the logical point of where to cut it based on my understanding of how the thing is constructed, you're basically cutting the department operations down to what it has today, leaving no room for growth over the next 50 some odd years. Um, in addition, um, remember we cut out completely the fire department uh, canopy. I've talked to Chief Marr, talked to Chief Paulus. There's certainly space for those um, storage units that don't actually fit within the building based with the extra space they have now to move over under there and occupy some of those spaces. So the one thing I'd ask you to think about um, and we'll talk about it further when we get that specific change order, is whether you want to actually entertain and get a recost of the canopy, but it would basically be bringing the canopy down to current operations and leave no room for future growth. So we won't discuss it now, but just something I'll just put, point out there. If we, don't, if we do nothing, then they're proceeding as approved by planning board and approximately three hundred fifty thousand dollars of our project budget. If we shrink it down, we have to go look at any more again. I think we'd have to notify them. I can't see why someone would object with shrinking a structure. It would not be changing the number of parking spaces. It it's just a matter of the number covered, of covered, right? covered parking spaces. So I don't think it would be a change. We would notify them. Do we? Do we happen to have a copy of the plan that, that might? That we can refer to, you tell us which ones were going away, or is that much more in depth than you wanted to get at this point? Um, I'll come back to that question. Okay. Um, remind me if I don't. Okay. When we get to that specific change order. Sure. Uh, just, so, uh, next item is change order responsibility. So, uh, we had a pretty robust conversation about at least some of our views on the station alerting um, at the last meeting. Um, there are certainly other change orders that have popped up that I think one we, we could certainly have a discussion on of should we have known about them, should we not, you know, what's the margin of error, so to say. So what I have um, asked Vertex to do is summarize a list of the change orders and kind of 
more or less assign ownership. So, for example, if there's something that uh, I'll use the fire hydrant. Um, I think Chief Morrow asked for the fire hydrant to be locate, relocated uh, for a particular reason. That was clearly a, a town directed change that you know we are responsible owners of. Um, there are others that maybe aren't. So what I was planning to do is Vertex is compiling the list. I would sit down with Vertex in context to understand the list and make a presentation to all of you for recommendations of what I think you know we should be doing with that list um, at our next meeting. But I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware that we were going to do that. I've asked for that to be done before the holidays so that we can report out um, in the new year at our first meeting. Any questions, comments on that? <coughs> Um, an item that I was asked about while I was giving an update to the Board of Selectmen on the project in the canopies was about the building naming, um, both on the actual building itself, but also specific rooms within the building. Uh, that request came from Mr. Kalenda, um, but the Board kind of then entertained it at their meeting. Um, I owed them kind of some homework of you know, what rooms. Uh, they asked for basically a, a blanket list of rooms um, in the building so that they could consider naming. Um, I consulted with Jeff, and Jeff kind of came back with a few options. Uh, with training tower, dispatch center, and training room. Um, and plus, potentially, the actual building itself. So uh, I believe it's on the Board of Selectmen agenda tomorrow to further discuss, but um, should they go down that route, I just wanted to make everyone aware that that discussion was happening. We gave them a project deadline of January 15th to make any sort of decisions along those lines, and that was in consulting consultation with CTA based on their needs and building signage, et cetera, that's gonna have to be reviewed. Mark, anything to add on any of that? I think the only thing to add would be, I had a brief discussion with uh, the chair, and it's a really tight time frame to try and do something like that. The board does have a naming policy. It does involve setting up a committee uh, to review, uh, you know, to, to get nominations for names, to, you know, to go through a process, to have that committee come back to, with three names. The board then needs to decide what to do. It, it's going to have to happen within two meetings. Uh, and setting up the committee couldn't happen until the last meeting in December. So, it's, I, I don't know that it's going to happen in time for these rooms to be dedicated if that's the intention of the selectmen for the, you know, for the ribbon cutting of the building and maybe something that happens after the fact. I don't know that that's a bad idea or a bad outcome, but um, the board will discuss that on um, uh, you know, tomorrow night, on Tuesday night. I just think it's logistically um, going to be difficult to try to do it within the time frame you suggested. Yeah, I would just say the exterior sign, right, if they decide to actually name the building yes. I don't know that yeah I, I don't think that's on the table that, that's but fine that's not what it's not on the table to ever name it or not on the table to do it now not on the table not on the table to do it now I think that the suggestions that were provided through Jason to the to the whether we are of the three spaces that were just mentioned so I don't think that the board is thinking of that. I think that's a larger discussion but uh, yeah I don't think it's off the table at all I just don't know that they would not rush into that decision like I agree. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I guess I would just, when you present it tomorrow, Mark, I would just make sure that that's very clear to all of them, because I couldn't, it, w it was obviously an ad hoc request that came out of our project update, sure. but I just want to make sure that they understand exactly the difference between the two and what we really need versus right. what's nice to have. Right, okay. Um, and then monthly project related uh, updates, I have nothing further to add on that point. Any questions? All right, I'll turn it over to John and Kevin for a monthly update. Great, thank you. So um, we've got some pictures <coughs> of you. Uh, if you want to spin your chairs around for a second. Um, this is a, the picture from last time, the aerial view. Uh, from the fourth, just before the 14th. Uh, this is, that picture was from here looking this way. Uh, this is the view, we've got four aerial shots this time. Uh, as you can see, a lot of progress since the last time. Right, th so this is a drone footage of the site, and as you can tell, uh, the roof trusses are being installed over the main portion of the building where all the support spaces are. 
police, fire, and administration area, as well as the masonry walls going up uh, over the apparatus floor. You can see where the openings are for each apparatus wow. bay. Uh, they're still working today. <coughs> they were doing the uh, sheathing of the uh, roof trusses, so that's a big milestone for us right now, as well as continuing the site work and drainage. You want to go to the next picture? So here's just another footage looking at the building. You can see the clubhouse in the upper left, upper right. Okay, and you can see where the site is starting to clear itself up. So you have the driveway coming around from right to left. Okay, the trailers, the satellite. No, sorry. Yep. It goes up and around to where the retaining walls have been put down. Gravel is now down. Up in that section, you just keep going over to the, yep, right in that area over there. We're going to be paving hopefully tomorrow for that section of the handicap spots of uh that go along with the clubhouse and then we're going to put the rest of the gravel going towards the clubhouse which and hopefully within the next 10 days we will have that completed inside here we, was, we started the roof truss work over the administration building that'll take another couple of weeks and then he's going to hopefully have the EVB and everything else starting to close in that portion of the building their plan right now is to finish the roof work and then start to close in and do temporary heat inside so they can work throughout the winter time. They've also started, well, this is just getting a little bit higher now. This is a 30,000 foot level. Uh, again, of the roof trusses looking towards the apparatus bay, and you can see where that's covered up over the top. Get some ground level shots. Yep. There you go. Interior look, and you can see with the dividing wall between apparatus and admin area. The roof truss is installed. The concrete flooring has been installed on the second floor. So this is a look at the second floor, looking out over towards the apparatus bay. And again, interior work with their framing. You can see the metal stud work is being done for some of the outside walls. Uh, this is all again on the second floor. Uh, they have they had a crane, which is now complete for the roof trusses. Now they're starting to do the sheathing work, which you'll see in the next month's uh, update. Here is the interior inside the uh, station where they're actually doing underground utility work and you can see it with the conduits uh, towards the middle over towards the right right over there and you can start seeing shortly the definition of each room area as they're going to be divided uh, in working spaces but right now that's occupied all day long with many excavators inside there doing their interior work this is just a nice view of the outside elevation of the building where you can see the man left on the all the way over to the right as he's securing the uh, roof trusses and looking out towards the building itself. And again, here it is from the back side, up near the retaining walls, uh, over near the gravel area of the uh, temporary golf entrance. You can see the apparatus bays on the left hand side, as well as the roof area of the admin spaces on the right. And again, just another view of the rear of the building. Uh, with the contractors working both up on the roof and in interior work. Uh, it looks like a beautiful view of some, I don't know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't. Overexposed picture. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that probably it looks like some models. <laughs> yeah, there's some uh, so, erosion. So some site erosion. Yeah. But it looked like the so. Great Wall of China after a second. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> when you look into the sun, not a good thing with the camera. But again, this is just a view from the site as you're driving into uh, up the driveway. This is what you're seeing as you're coming in off Corvall Road. That's a picture from there. Any questions? It's coming along very nicely. Um, and again, uh, I, I know there was talk about doing a walkthrough sooner or later, uh, as time now has it. 4.30 is pretty much pitch black, so. Yes, sir. What are you expecting to be watertight? Because I, 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 I don't really remember. I thought initially they were hoping by end of December. To yes, be that, that was the original plan. They were hoping to get it all done that? right now. They've added more crews to the framers, so they, they want to really run. And they're doing an outstanding job with running with the trusses and now the sheathing, but there's still a couple more applications to finish off that roof. As far as watertight, his, he still plans on for mid to end of December. Wow. So I don't, it's gonna be one of those things looking at him going, you sure? I really <laughs> hope so. <laughs> so again, uh, I will update the, the, the committee and everybody else as far as, as he's going. But there's a, a 
ton of work that's been done in the 13 or so calendar days since <laughs> just between those two pictures. So okay. it's work. I mean, we, oh. we have had some oh. issues with the site being a mud pit. Uh, so well, we've had some rain, haven't we? Just a little yeah. bit. It was very, very minor, but uh, it was enough to, um, it forced them to do interior work, which without a roof was amazing because it just kept going. They, they never stopped. They were always up on the roof, handing trusses. The crew was outstanding. They, we only had one day where we actually had them slow down because the wind gusts got up to 45 miles an hour. We were like, okay, let's come back down. So. Any other questions, Mr. Harpel? So, um, more of a comment, and Kevin can correct me, yep. but um, I was out there earlier today. I, I've been trying to get out there just about every day, simply so the contractor sees me and talking with the clerk of the works and understands that I'm concerned about making sure we adhere to the schedule that Kevin talked about with the clubhouse and making sure that we get at least a temporary CO on that before, um, uh, before the end of December. Um, I do just want to point out that the Conix boxes where the, um, the golf carts um, were housed, um, they were in the way of the utility conduits coming into the site, so we were trying to find a way to move those. They have been emptied. The golf carts are now uh, located out beyond the construction fence by the clubhouse. The management company has said that that was okay to locate them there. That's what they wanted to do with them. <coughs> Understanding they're hoping to be in the clubhouse within the next three weeks or so. Uh, and those Connex boxes have started to move. I think they moved. Three, three of the four were removed today. Oh, the three? last one okay. were removed yeah, on they Thursday. Removed the second one I saw when right. I was there. And so the last one will actually be physically picked up tomorrow, just relocated on the site so they can continue with the retention pond and utility work. So thank you very much to Mr. John Allen who moved all the golf carts instead of having us driving around. But he removed them <laughs> and, and we were able to take the Connex boxes out. Any other questions? No. All right. We will move forward to proposed change orders. Uh, similar to all prior meetings, I'll announce the change order uh, and then turn it over to Jeff or Ellen to walk us through what it's all about. Um, and we'll go from so Jeff, starting with PCO 30R1 Elevator 4, which is a savings of $161. And 79 cents. Okay. Um, okay. So, starting with the elevator floor, so the design of the building uh, assumed uh, kind of a conflict in the specifications. We assumed the elevator would end up with a uh, Brazilian floor, linoleum floor, but we actually specified a stone floor. But the elevator was did not have that same specification. So the stone tile contractor had cost for installing it that we took as a credit and we didn't have any corresponding charges or credits on the elevator. So this is simply just to um, eliminate the stone flooring from the elevator itself. Which, if you get into elevator design and you want to put a stone bed in the elevator, you have to almost custom design the floor of the elevator for the extra thickness because most elevators only accommodate a very thin flooring type. So if we were to go the other way and want to put the stone in, we own the stone, but we have a much bigger cost to, rep to uh, change the elevator. So this was the, the easier way to go. So a small credit. Test yes, that. Um, Any questions on that one? All right, Jeff. PCO 37 <coughs> pass through window, which is cost $11,231.82. So the existing lobby uh, in the original design had a door to the fire department administration area. Um, there was a side light next to the door so you could see in, but uh, the fire department, after continuing to think about it, uh, determined that they would be best served by having a transaction window rather than inviting, just keeping the door open and inviting anybody through because the idea being that the lobby should be a secure area they didn't want their front administration person dealing with whatever's coming through the door. So they decided um, to redesign, have us redesign the area, putting in a transaction window similar to the communications room, dispatch room transaction window, which tweaked the door <coughs> so we don't have a side light there, uh, and had some other wall changes. So this is the cost for that design change. Okay, any questions on that? I'm gonna skip canopies. Okay. Um, fire rated glazing, uh, 142377. 
Uh, in this case, we had specified uh, glass that was able to meet fire resistance levels um, rather than truly fire rated glass. It's sort of a distinction between the two. Nowadays, you can actually buy rated glass. You didn't be, in the past, you wouldn't be able to do that. You could buy glass that had a wire. You probably all seen them in old school buildings, things like that. It had a wire in it. Yep, right there. And that wire, basically, when the glass breaks, it keeps it intact. Um, and so it's not the greatest look. So uh, this is for changing all of the egress components that have these little glass pieces in them to a fire rated glass, which don't have these uh, diamonds or square in them. Um, fire rated glass is a little bit more expensive than the wire glass. So that's the added cost for that change. Any questions? Both items meet code, so it's just an aesthetic concern for us. Okay, PCO 51 antenna bracket revisions. So we had a design for a, we still do have a design for a long rail on the roof that has uh, capacity to hold all of the whips, antenna whips for the, both departments. Um, and at the time we were coordinating with uh, the folks working with the radio system and I think at the time the uh, supplier never actually saw our detail and once they did finally see it, they asked to increase the size of the diameter of the piping so that their equipment <coughs> could attach to it better. So this would this is the cost for increasing that response to his requirements. Is there any I guess my question on that one would be is there anything different in that bracket that may make it higher or have planning, be concerned with anything in terms of height? We have discussed height and other confi configurations of that rail, but all of it has been with the assumption that the steel, all the pieces we're putting in it would be below the bridge line. So you, should, you still should not be able to see it from the street. You will probably be able to see the whips because they need line of sight, but they're fairly thin and shouldn't be intrusive. Okay. Um, the next one is for the time extension. It's a no-cost time extension. This uh, includes adjustment to the phase one um, date as well as phase two date. Um, and I believe there is a certain number of days on. I think it's nine days, ten days that were added to the project. Six, six, six working six days. Working six working days. Ends up being ten so, calendar days yeah. in July. July first of July. Right. Um, so question on that one, and this is more for phase one. Um, Mark, um, this says 228.19. Understood. Is that okay with you? From so that perspective, I mean, this has nothing to do. Yeah, I think the the issue is with us getting a TCO, and obviously there'll be additional things that will need to happen for the full certificate of occupancy. But the TCO will get us what we need to in terms of the ability to put the carts in the building, and make sure that the licensing on the uh, building for the management company doesn't lapse. So are you comfortable with the wording? I am comfortable with that, given the arrangement that okay. Vertex has <coughs> with, the, uh, with, the, with the contractor. Okay. Right, and we've also, just to clarify, and I don't know if you know this, but today we had uh, a rough sign-off on plumbing. So now it's just going to be the final. This week we'll have the HVAC uh, sheetrock and other items that need to be done in order to turn the building over for a TCO. So right now we are on schedule. We're pushing everybody to have that date done so uh, we can take care of whatever we have to do in order to get that TCO by the 18th of December. Okay. Any questions on the time one? This is essentially what we discussed at the yeah. last meeting. Is, it, is there a letter change on that the committee's going to see? Is it, just, is it just the change order that basically says what's in your summary? Is that the only thing? Well, this, yeah, this change order form that um, we put in it, it, it comes with a, an, a actual change order. This is the actual change order form itself that changes the contract. Um, and yeah, this change is just the phase two. Well, zero uh, cost, contract. right? So that, that summary cost. letter is... Yeah. Uh, yeah, CTA didn't have time before um, the meeting to actually revise their backup. But our covering, basically, I was going to say, we're looking at your cover letter. Yeah. And, that's, yeah. and that's what drives the... the and also this, uh, the, the actual change order form here, which I think we need to add phase one to. Phase two. So that'll drive it over the rule of the PCO Okay. Does that answer your question? Or? Yeah, I just, we started and I was like, I haven't something writing. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, oh. So then PCO 54, which is lobby floor insignias, which I think you alluded to at the la end of the last meeting. Yeah, so um, we did get pricing on this. This was a recommendation or, or a request um, from the chiefs, or mainly from police chief, um, but I thought it was reasonable, uh, to inlay into the lobby floor the um, insignias, patches, essentially for both departments. They would be side by side at the far end of the lobby as you approach the dispatch desk. Um, we did get pricing. Uh, strangely enough, we actually got pricing from a subcontractor that had previously uh, did not submit pricing on another job that we were doing for a similar type of thing. So I don't know what happened, but they saw the light there and wanted to do it. So this is for both, both patches plus the additional costs in prepping the floor that is more intensive than just doing a regular four floor tile itself plus the cutouts of the floor tile. So um, includes providing the actual insignias and so uh, So I'll just make this point. I've already said it before, but I talked to the police chief about when they last, so I mean, I haven't been in police or fire service, it's regular that departments revise their patches. Over time, it's usually members of the department approach chief and a chief authorizes or says, no, we're going with it. Chief Paulus has said they've already redone their patch recently. Obviously, with Chief Morrow's retirement, we can't speak for a future chief. My only concern with this is, as much as I think it's a great touch, I really don't want the next chief coming in, putting a new patch on the, on the shirts of the men and women of this department, and then it not matching before. I'm not sure, nothing we can necessarily control, per se. I just, that's my only reservation with this request, but I'm not going to let it pull back up, I guess. Didn't we talk point. about construction delays as well at this point? Are there any, delays I guess, on it? is this going to cause any delays? No. I think that the comment was, if we don't approve is it, if, like, this is the meeting they wanted. Yeah. We can't go another meeting. Right. Because yeah, of fabrication, okay. appro you know, approval, submittal, you know, submittal, approval, let the order come in. Now we're suddenly in April, and the floor is already in. So the deadline to, to this meeting for that discussion. I think you just look at it, the patches that were in the building is built. What's that? You look at it as the patches that were there when the building is built. How, uh, how, perpetuity. how uh, old are the patches that we have now? <coughs> are they cheap policy? I believe our patch goes back to the early 90s when they redesigned it. And when I say we made, we redesigned it, they just made a slight change to the patch. That's it, and the union voted on it. All they did was, it used to say police DEPT, D -E -P -T. all they did is take out the DEPT. So this, this patch has been around for, you know, 20, 25, 26 years, and it, as far as I'm concerned, it'll, it'll be here <laughs> for uh, the duration. Uh, it's a very good looking patch. It shows all the, uh, the town uh, and the, the little insignia, the cannon, uh, the church, all that stuff. So the colors are right. I don't, I don't anticipate it ever changing. Chief Marv, can you just answer the same question? I don't see it changing either. We did ours in 2002, and before that, I think the patch was the same from the inception in 1925. So. Okay. I do. Um, See in Sudbury's new station, they had it. I have a color picture here. It's spectacular. If you want to take a look, sure. There's a standalone police station, correct. Does anyone want to hold any? 
like they're gonna have a different vote on any of them. What's the total of the ones we just discussed? Uh, 20. Yeah, roughly 20. Does anyone, anyone want to hold any? <coughs> All right, then I'm going to move that we approve uh, PCO 30R1, PCO 37, PCO 49, PCO 51, PCO 53R1, and PCO 54. Is there a second? Sorry. Second by Mr. Wood. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? All right, that carries unanimously. All right, so let's go back to the canopy. Um, so David, your question was, is there a uh, design or something we could put up on the screen to show if we were to reduce the number of spaces, which spaces would they be? Right, I'm just trying to get a visual for, for what the canopies currently look like and what we'd expect, you know, just kind of which ones are going and how it's being changed. Is that I'll see if I you may have sent see if I can that email. Fire alarm needs to be reset at the library. Fire alarm to be reset at the library. While John pulls that up, I guess as as you consider kind of where you're gonna go, um, and where we move, you know, in terms of do we accept the change order as presented or do we go back and um, look at reducing approximately 30 percent of the size of the canopy uh, I kind of outlined how the spots had been allocated to begin with the the other thing to think about is there are more change orders coming um, I'm aware of potentially at least two sizable ones coming at our next meeting um, not to say that they are going to be approved but um, one relates to the signage the traffic signage and one relates to um, epoxy flooring uh, in most of the apparatus bay. Uh, I don't want to get into the merits behind any of them tonight because I don't have all the details in front of us and I think the team is still vetting them. But as you think about the cost of the project, right, you know, in where we're going to go with uh, agenda item, that our next agenda item, agenda six, in terms of, I asked John to really put together a list of everything else we may have to spend on this project so that um, you're not all making decisions kind of in a silo, right? Like 1,000 here, 5,000 here may sound really good, like sound like a, a good idea, but if we do that every meeting, adds up to a very sizable number. So, um, they're gonna be off I would just you know throw that out there that this is not the end of change orders. I think I, you know right there are going to be things that are unknown that are going to come we down the road. Okay. But I felt like it was necessary to kind of make that full disclosure now. So, but we need to decide on the canopies tonight in terms of what direction because they are, as you know, rapidly moving to kind of winterize that process. So they'll at least be putting in the footings. Um, in the steel in the spring, I would imagine. Yeah, they want to throw those puddings in as soon as possible. Right. Um, and that will, I mean, they, they, they can't do it until they have a signed change order to give to the steel fabricator to get shop drawings, to get the anchor bolt patterns so they can put them into the concrete. So that's how it goes. And so they want to get the concrete as fast as possible, which means they need all of those steps to happen. Um, now they know they're going to be doing winter concrete. So, but they still want to get it as get it done as well. <coughs> so, so Jeff, let's just say some portion of the committee, let's just say it's a majority, decided to cut 30% of the canopy tonight. You don't have an exact cost. You're saying, based on the one email that I think these parties received, it's approximately 25% savings, right? So that's the knowledge the committee would be voting with if they went that road. Right. How does that then materialize? Like how I know some of it's due to some vacations on the CTA side. It sounded like. Right. How quickly does that change order then materialize so that you can make an educated, you know, go no go decision with 19 spots or 13? I guess is our going to be our choice tonight. Yeah, I mean, I I thought Paul's response was rational, but sometimes things don't always work rationally like that. So, um, you know, I I guess. 
I would say that I would expect CTA to be able to turn around an actual change order within 10 days, um, certainly within 10 days. But if they know that it's likely to be approved, as soon as they turn it around and they want to get it in the ground, then maybe they'd be better. Um, so you could call potentially another meeting when we've got the actual change order prepared. Um, I think there's different ways you can handle it, but I'd say Okay. So that John's got the screen up. I mean, just, yeah, yeah. just put it, John. And if yeah. we looked at it the other way, Jeff, if we were to put additions on the canopy in 10 years because they need the space. Oh, yeah. You, you're right. yeah. That probably goes without saying. It's going to be significantly more expensive to do anything later on. Because you're mobilizing, et cetera. To the, to the extent that it's highly unlikely the town would do anything for a while, you know, until the memory of the construction faded. So another generation, basically. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's been my experience that if you don't do it right away, it, it takes a long time to get it done. Yeah, that works. Yeah, Are we going to vote on the canopy, the either reduced canopy and full canopy, before we hear from John as far as the expected future change orders? Um, yeah, because because we don't have final pricing around those. Can you give us a ballpark? Times a thousand, times a hundreds. Yeah, just totally changed my opinion. Then. <laughs> but lots of hundreds, or <laughs> <laughs> the math I've heard is somewhere between one and two hundred. So just so you're aware, what the items? Are, it's the, the epoxy and the epoxy and the signs. The, the signs would be approximately sixty, and the uh, epoxy would probably be around seventy. Just on the side, because you're, you're doing the base coat. So, and then once you have an epoxy floor, right now you own a, a sealed concrete floor. This is in the apparatus. This is in the yes. apparatus, but yeah. In some police areas, my understanding is it salad port, port as well. Salad port as well. Yeah. Salad port as well. Um, and the the ad is a potential to change that floor finish to an epoxy an epoxy applied system, multiple colors, or maybe two colors. Two colors. Know, gray for the field, yellow for the lines, kind of thing. Or white. It, that's all details that haven't been talked about. And just keep in mind on that one. That was something we removed from the bid specs when we were trying to find dollars because of, because of budget. Yeah. So, so if you're going to add, add it, I, you're going to add. You've already removed it. Correct. So again, um, you're removing it in VE yeah. to save money. Bids came in real low, but it, it hadn't made the alternate list as something to. Possibly add it back in. Why didn't it make the alternate list? Was it on the alternate list? It was not on the alternate list. <coughs> yeah, it was not on the alternate list. So it didn't make that alternate list, so it wasn't even an option for you on bid day. But at this point, the question is do you, if you still would like it, you can still do it. I think the alternates were complicated because of the golf. So that's why it didn't make the list. <laughs> it was just going to mess everything else up. Yeah. So with that, and if you're right about the numbers, we have change orders cumulatively of about eight hundred thousand dollars if you approve the full canopy. Where are you getting eight? Well, I'm looking at this, and you've got almost six hundred. Canopy's in there. Where are two? I said it's in there. I said it's in can full canopy. Yep. That's what I said, right? So eight hundred total. So that's about five percent of the contract. Mm -hmm. so we're at five percent, right? Mm -hmm. Which is still not too bad, right? As long as nothing else comes up. At what point of construction does big change orders stop happening? <coughs> out of the ground. Yeah, we're, we're out of the ground. The, ones, the big ones there. that you yeah. have to do, you can choose to do big ones later on. But you know about those because you're the one choosing to do it. Usually those are the ones associated with ledge and those kinds of things that are you're out of so you're you don't you're know. So we're doing this project in reverse orders, essentially what you're saying. We we basically had no change <laughs> orders while we were in the ground. And now all of a sudden yeah. well, remember it now. We have to yeah, remember about ledge. something like the car the car ports. It's the ledge no one no one was yeah, denied the ledge. It's that was nothing compared to eight hundred thousand. Or epoxy. Well, right, but whose uh, idea was it to change back to the epoxy? It's not an idea. We priced it because the department passed this. 
to see what the cost would be to present. The department? Fire department. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's, I think it was reasonable to get the pricing to show you where it would be, and I think it's up to you. It was a similar situation in Westford where we just finished, where they decided, they got to the end, they had the money, and they said, yeah, we want to do it. And they decided to do it once they saw where everything else was kind of coming in dollar-wise, they said, yeah, we're never going to do this later. So if we're going to do it, let's do it now. So they added it at and a cost of... And that's true. I mean, yeah. it could be something we picked down the road. You don't have to, you don't have to say yes to epoxy floors now. I know where you are. Because there's a lot of work to go before before you get there. I'm just making you aware of it. So I'm going to table, just because they don't have a complete proposal mm -hmm. on that, I just want you to be aware of that's one. I think we could all agree that that is a optional, right? That is not a move-in requirement for the building. The signs on the other hand, we need those, which we'll talk about the merits of those at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. But that's that's an agenda. That's an item that we're not going to have an option on because we'll fail planning conditions uh, if we don't properly. We talked about a way maybe to save premium on that too. Perfect. Yeah. So I think. Why don't you walk us through the location to answer David's question, then we'll kind of open it up for discussion on the committee. Sure. So, David, here's the location of where the police covered spaces mm -hmm. are to be. Yeah. This is the location where the fire ones that were removed were supposed to be. So, Jeff, I don't know if you took away six spaces. I don't know if it's from this side I think, no, from the bottom. or from the bottom. No, from the bottom up. So I, I, you would I yeah, took away the um, bottom six spaces. It's a uh, fat crayon here. Uh, there, I'm sorry. Okay. Now those would still be parking spots. They just would not be under the can. Right, and in the space needs evaluation that was done um, was that was the assumption that there would be 19 cars or vehicles that the department owned and if they were all parked there at the same time you would be 19 spaces I recall for 15 15 yeah so the only other issue that Kevin just brought up is right now the conduit is supposed to feed to yeah. here yeah. so we would have to we would probably own some additional, maybe, well, actually, depending mm -hmm. on where, no, it might own less. We, we're, yeah. We'd have to go out to see the aid. That was the one we'd thing we would have to tell them soon so that they don't run those conduit to that location because it would be the wrong side. <laughs> so why, would, why are you cutting that side as opposed to the other side? It seemed like the, the more than likely the police cruisers would be towards the back of the site. That just seemed like operationally, that's probably where they would want to be doesn't have to be there. I didn't even talk to the chief about it, but that's what I assume. I'd say the shortest walk. Yeah. So put the front line cruisers at the shortest walk and eliminate them at the longest walk. So that the door they're going to come in is uh, right just after the bump out and I let it there, John, that's the door. So I mean, we could even, we could even, you know, take, we could move the whole canopy down so it's equally distant around the door. Yeah, again, we have a lot of flexibility. Yeah. Uh, so I guess, in fairness to the police chief, I don't, chief, if you have any thoughts on what you've heard, impact operations, short term, long term. Uh, I will say when we were putting this together, um, I talked about extra garage space, and it was just too cost prohibitive, and we talked about the canopies. So it would fit our operational needs right now. I'd be leaving them short down the road. If anybody's worried about uh, those spaces going vacant. Uh, you know, while we wait in the ensuing years, you know, while the department grows, I would, you know, surely have the fire department put some of their um, trailers out of the weather, you know, in some of those additional spots. That would be fine. And we got rid of six spots for the fire department originally. Well, we got rid, it's actually 10, is my understanding. Was it 10 that went? 10 covered is what, at least that's the original thing I think was 10, yeah. for 10 covered spaces, but because of the layout on no, this particular six, site, six, we only had six available. So for the $75,000 savings yeah. that we didn't choose to, we kept it as is, we'd be able to house basically all the police and fire stuff that we initially spec'd out. Mm -hmm. 
and then not how much roughly how much was the poly? Roughly the same cost, seventy five thousand, is that what you said? You you talking about the um epoxy poly? Yeah. yeah. Again, that's back of the napkin based on the mm -hmm. job we just did. It's not a quote for nope. no, no, no. Yeah, that's just yeah. roughly. So, yeah, we're we're right. so for seven, in my mind, yeah. Yeah. And for seventy-five thousand dollars, I can even I could either have the full uh, canopy, which houses the fire department and police department, or a box. Paul, or, or we can save seventy-five thousand dollars. Well, we can save seventy-five thousand. And have no boxes. Or you do the canopy and you wait and see how everything else shakes out. Go to Kathy. So well, I wasn't here last week, so I'm my fault, but um, so I've missed something here. So the solar is off the table? We're no bids received. No bids. Why is there no bids, no bids but we're just giving up? Uh, be, and the reason was winterization, is we have to get in the ground and put the foundations in. Okay. Uh, otherwise, we risk drilling into uh, new asphalts. Um, in the spring. Yeah. So Chief, the reason, we don't have any canopies now, right? Cars are wide open. Um, so the reason, the main reason with canopies is snow? It's just all weather. I mean, whether it's 90 degrees out or, you know, frost in the morning or snow and, you know, just at your house. Even if you have a carport, it's just going to be better for the life of the vehicle. But you know, you're open on the run. side, right? We just got to cover on the top. That's all it is. I believe so, yeah. Right, so I'm not sure you're going to get rid of the frost by FMD. Um, snow, yes. Um, 19 cars. I don't know of any projection that shows South Road is going to grow enough. I mean, we don't have much room to grow that we end up with 19 cars anytime soon. However, if we're going to do it, I don't I don't want anybody sit here and think we should say, we'll push it down the road, we'll do it in five years. This town has got a budget problem, so if we're going to do it, we should do it. Um, do it right um, and be done. Um, and not think, okay, we'll try to figure it out in a couple of years to squeeze in the capital budget. And I can tell you how hard it is to squeeze in the capital budget right now. Um, so I don't think we should add to his woes as far as that goes. So if we're going to do it, we think we should do it. I don't think we should start saying we've got 13 cars exactly today, and um, and then two years come back and say we need four more communities because we bought something else. So I'd say if we're going to do it, we should just do it right and do, do something. Yeah, I mean, my, my concern is that uh, we told, we continually said we were building a building for now and into the future. We knew there was going to be space to grow into. If we accept 13 spots, we basically put in the department at what they, I know they don't have a canopy table, we're putting them at what they have today. I think the chief is working collaboratively with the fire chief to accommodate what the fire department gave up. Um, so I can't see the town ever spending money <coughs> to, to add on to this in the future. So it goes to the let's do it right once not five times, which I think has been what the town has done with, with projects in the past. Sorry. Uh, I'm, just I'm just saying, you know, a lot of public safety in the room, worst case scenario, the worst blizzard you ever had, <coughs> coming in, and, you know, off duty, you called into work to have to shovel cruises off in the emergency or a fire truck, let alone if you had um, National Greek come out and stage at the station, they could back into the complex, keep their vehicles from getting all snow over. I think it's foolish that we don't build them now, build them right for the future, and then to come back in a few years and say, you know, we screwed up, we should have built the whole thing. Well, but here's another thing, too. So we have 12, 12 cruisers that need to be covered, correct? And then um, and then we have fire equipment that can also go into there. So even if we put the 19 canopy, 19 space canopy, it's still going to be pretty full right now, correct? Correct. So. Um, a national grid pulling in in case of an emergency. Is that a big, like, band that bring in? A big, uh, it's a little, same size as a fire pump, right? As a what? A truck. As yeah, a fire truck. Fire truck. Oh, a little bit small. Will it fit under the canopy? Yeah. Okay, I just yeah. I mean, I don't know how high the canopy is. The equipment would be protected if it was shoveled yeah. off. All right, so I am going to move that we accept PCO 47 for the amount presented and consistent with the prior vote of this committee. Is there a second? Second. All right, second by Mr. Wood. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? All right, so that carries unanimously. All right, John.
Yes. Um, I gave a preview of this, and I'll turn the floor over to you in a second. But this next item, which is uh, review and approval of items requiring procurement, is to avoid a situation like we had at the last meeting related to the station alerting, where there's something that just kind of get got left off to the side and not either in the bid documents or brought forward quick enough. So this is John in Vertex's first attempt at documenting everything else that we may have to procure that we know about. What I think the best way to go about this, I actually have a lot of questions that I haven't, um, you know, that I have, and I'm sure you all will too, um, and this is where I really rely, Kathy, maybe on you from an advisory perspective as well, and Mark from you from the town ongoing operation is, how much of this stuff is really building budget as opposed to pick it up and move it down the street sort of budget? Um, so I think, John, why don't you walk, I know you listed out the budget that we have, what we need to do, I guess what the next steps are, and I guess my personal view and those as we kind of go through this can echo it is, my goal is to procure as much of this now mm -hmm. so we know what we're paying for and that there's no more surprises, so to say. So to the extent that we can give you direction tonight, happy to do that. To the extent you need to do more homework, I guess educate us on what homework you're doing so that sure. we're not waiting another three or four months. So each of these items, when we talk about, uh, with the exception of the bottom two, <coughs> telephones, computers, and network connections, uh, and office equipment. When I say office equipment, I mean more along the lines of copiers, printers, you know, Xerox, any of those kind of things. So, you know, for each of these items, the next thing to have Kevin do is to set up a meeting with the town's IT person and say, okay, you know, what are we going to put in here? Is there, is there a town standard, you know, from a phone or computer standpoint? And actually start listing out the bill of materials that they, you know, do. That's assuming if we're doing all new. You know, what we haven't done yet is shaken out. Is there anything worth coming out of either of the buildings to figure that out? And that needs to be a discussion with that <coughs> person to say, look, you would know what's in here. You know, is there a server that's a year old but you know still good a good piece of equipment? So basically to come up with that list, list out what it is. All of those things I'm mentioning are essentially state bid list items. So we can go right off of the right off of the, the listing. Um, and come up with what those things are, and then be able to come back to you and say, okay, here we go, you know, here's what we found, here's the list, it's within budget, or we need a little more budget, and here's why. Get the approval and then lock it in with a PO like we have the other things so far. So, you know, telephones, you own the pipe and wiring through the, through the, through the contract already, but you don't own the handsets. You know, the handset's gonna be like, what's right behind us here? Or is there something the police has? We need to make sure that you know what we're getting is one system that works well, you know, throughout the entire of building. Uh, for computers, it goes from everything from you know, this setup that we have in this room right here. Are we taking it, or are we specking it out new? If so, you know, why? Or you know, is there, you know, what's that cost? Um, desktops, how many do we have? How many do we need? You know, basically kind of shake all that up as well. Um, office equipment. Small, it, you know, I put in here as an item, but don't be overwhelmed by it. It's more kind of an offshoot of computers, but it's, for me, it's more printers, Xeroxes, those kind of things that uh, you may have under lease right now, which may not, to your point, may not even come out of the budget, but we want to at least, we want to touch all the pieces to make sure we know where they're coming from so that when it's time to move, there's not a hole somewhere where there should be a piece of machinery. Um, kitchen appliances, um, you know, <coughs> kind of the last piece of FF and E, you know, what's, what are we putting in the kitchens, uh, putting in, you know, uh, for food service. And then the last big piece for um, the radios is the actual dispatch desks. We've already bought the equipment that goes on the desks, that goes to the roof, you know, the, the wires in between them, but you haven't bought the actual dispatch desks. Um, as an update on that, the chiefs are, have been working with a, a consultant um, that they procured themselves out of their own budgets that came back with uh, three options. Um, two of the options are within the 68500 The third option is not. Kevin is currently working with that third company to try to squeeze that number down and also to talk to them about, uh, we're not looking totally at an Apple, you know, an Apple, Apple, Apple. In that case, they proposed some 
some other things that might be some nice to haves, but we want them to price those separately so we can kind of see how they fall in with the other two. Of the two that are within budget, only one of them is on the state bid list, unfortunately, but they're on the state bid list. So we could let that vendor go and with the money we have, you know, in the line item left <coughs> for right now. So then yeah, the only thing I would caution is, you know, it's great we're falling within the line item for a lot of these things. But again, those are numbers that were those were estimates from a while ago. So, you know, if some of these things come in a little higher, a little bit lower, you know, we have to be able to adjust the, the market and that sort of thing. But so far, you know, I feel pretty good about everything on the sheet, with the exception of kitchen appliances. But those 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 go over. You know, why is that not in the bid? Um, because just like the furniture, okay. you can usually they are in the bid. Yeah. yeah. No, no. We're on the budget. No, those are in the yeah. Okay. We had that discussion in the construction yeah. video last oh. week. <laughs> we had a discussion. <laughs> we did have a discussion. <laughs> <laughs> lengthy. We did have a lengthy discussion about whether or not the department would like to purchase them separately. Just oh, to, take you know, them out of the contract. Take them out as a credit. So okay. we, we all decided to keep them, keep them with the GC. Okay. Surprise. Thank you. <laughs> Merry <laughs> Christmas. Well, that's good. That's really good. So the process is just to keep moving the ball and now actually start to spec this, these things out to make sure they work with the infrastructure the town has, the systems they already have. And if we're going to depart from that, make sure we have a good reason why. Um, so it works for everybody. So you have a meeting or we're, we're we scheduling, are, we are meeting scheduling with a Tom. meeting with Tom? Okay. Subsequent, Tom. subsequent to this. Or the municipal technology committee as well? That's a, we figured we'd start with Tom. All right, so I will reach out to the chair of that committee as well to see what they should have involvement. Um, and just, there's a variety of activities. Yeah, and, and, and none of, given where we are at the time, this is the time to be doing this. You know, we've got six months, seven months at this point. Uh, this is the time we typically would start doing this. Because a lot of these things we're going to procure are, I'm not going to say off the shelf, but easier procured than a radio system for those kind of things. So it would just be nice to know if we're over or under. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, we should know that within, if not by next meeting, by the following meetings for sure. Um, and be able to adapt it would be my goal that that early February meeting is where we lock in, you know, the rest of these items with that. But, uh, yeah. No, I just said uh, what I said before is make sure I'm not buying stuff that's in the two years after you buy Oh, I don't, that's not, I don't disagree with you, but just to shake out, so everybody can say straight faced we looked at it sure we could take it it's not worth it we'll be replacing it within a couple of years and we'll rely on tom for that yeah the dates on those things but it's really easy just to say throw it out and buy new i really hope you make a valiant effort to see what some of the stuff can be used um because everything everything comes and there's some stuff here that is fairly new uh, that mm -hmm. hopefully could be moved i don't disagree so you I guess I'll coordinate with the Municipal Technology Committee. Okay. Just make sure their chair is either facilitating meetings for you guys or <coughs> providing the right I'm contacts. I'm just going to reach out to Tom to start okay. and then and use them as well because like you just said it to tie into the utility. Well, here's the thing, right? If they're going to do a new phone system for the town next year, if that's part of like a capital plan article. These phones are moving, and they just need to make sure they've accounted for how many phones you need in a new building. I get we probably need more in certain spaces that aren't, we don't have those spaces currently, but, um, and then I guess, like, what do you typically see in other buildings? Like, are, are people, I, I mean, Jeff, I know you probably came up with those rough line items, but people usually are picking up, I assume, their computers, and move, like, the, whatever computer the chief has now, He's picking up and moving into his new office, right? He's not getting all well, the Not necessarily. Not necessarily depends. It depends. Differently. Like old tower units, how old are they? You know, this is the time to get one. <coughs> you know, and a lot of towns will do it in the project budget and not on the capital because capital money is tight. You, 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 have, you, have, you, have, you have project money. Yeah, and plus they don't want to bond the, sh the small equipment right. costs for 30 years. Well, it's a reason not to include your sense. That's right. So it, we've seen we've seen both. It really is bad to town by town. 
so decision. Mark, not to put you on the spot, is there any direction from you as in your finance team of how you see some of these items shaking out? So, um, Kathy makes a valid point. You know, the budgets are tight, capital is tight. One of the reasons budgets are tight and capital is tight is because the bonding for this project is assuming an enormous amount of debt. Um, so, of a potential 9.8% tax increase based on all the requests from operational and capital this year for uh, for next year's budget, um, two and three quarters percent of that increase is paying the debt for the public safety. Um, and so we've only seen part of the impact of the cost of that, so we just need to be cognizant of um, what we spend on the project and what we end up bonding. So, you know, to Kathy's point, you know, it's kind of the chicken and the egg, depends on which way you look at it. So there, there are some, th you know, there, there are things that should be included in the project, you know, if, if they need to be, but the committee, I think, needs to be careful. Um, I know that when Shrewsbury built a new middle school, you know, they included a bunch of iPads in it, and they started a, a program where every student would have an iPad and responsible. So again, th there, there are things that you can do within, you know, the confines of the project. You just need to be cognizant of the overall cost, the impact of the debt, and and that you know that is driving some of the some of the financial issues, you know that we're having right now is just trying to to absorb that debt without, you know, really negatively impacting our service levels for our departments. Okay. So everybody should be shocked by what he just said: ten percent year-over-year -year tax increase. And so we started last year too. It's going to keep going. I mean, there's just no relief in sight. Well, it's not staying at that level. Well, I know it's not. Right, right. I know. Yeah. But the that point is, like was wish <laughs> yeah. and that's not people throwing everything in either. That's what, you know, that's actually a fairly reasonable re yeah. set of requests that's got to be ratcheted back again. So every year we just keep ratcheted back, throwing things to the future. But I'm still confused about what we're talking about. We've got all this stuff in this budget that 15 million 125 has. You have line items for right. it, correct? Mm -hmm. So the fact that right. some of the stuff may not last 30 years as long as the debt does, I don't know why that, I mean, it's a small piece of it anyway. Um, so is someone saying that we shouldn't include that in there because it won't last? Um, and then throw it to the town? I, I don't understand what we're trying to talk about here. It's in the 15125. Everything you <coughs> mentioned. Correct. Correct. Everything you mentioned is in the total project. Total. Mm -hmm. Fifteen one two five. Fifteen one two five. I'm sorry. Well, the twenty two. I apologize. Twenty two two seven. The twenty two. Yes. So it's yes. in there. So we contemplate Correct. that being part of the debt, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And we never really talked about the fact that maybe some of these few things, it's very very small amount percentage wise, might not last as long as the debt goes. But that's definitely going to happen, um, mm -hmm. right? So sure. we're not talking about taking those out and financing them to the town, right? No, and I. It, and what I would tell you is from a technology standpoint, you think like, you know, a desktop, if you can bring it, great, but more, you know, want to make sure that you, when we talk about computers and network, firewall and those kind of things, you know, police station, you know, focus on that stuff first. Focus on the important stuff that's in the, in the server rooms and then what's on the desks. You know, we all have them at home. They all go bad after them. You can get seven to ten years out of them, you got to replace them. So be it. To me, it's more important that you have, and I, you know, I don't know what your thoughts, Jeff, to focus more on the, you know, the, inf the central infrastructure of this new state-of-the-art building, and less on what's on people's desktops. Uh, it's probably a better way to spend your money. Yeah. And if we get there, and if you know, if we we do this, and it comes in to your point, and you know, Tom says, well. Here's what I want. It's 200. Okay, then we'll have that discussion of is it worth the extra 50. But you know, we're, we're at the beginning stage here of shaking out what that whole list is. And I agree with you. Yes, you know, there are line items for for these uh, for these things. I think what I hear mainly done is simply just a verification exercise that the budgeting that was done before yes. includes everything that we need for the building. We know what those items are. And we have a plan to get them into the building, whether it's moving stuff that exists, buying new, and then talking about financing it, that's a whole separate discussion. And that's not really one that we can really concern with. Yeah. For example, if the price of a server has gone up since you did your budget a year ago, which I'm sure it has, we're not gonna we're not gonna jeopardize a firewall with people 
personal financial information. I think we just need to know that. So, do you plan to have these meetings and come before us with as much of this vetted out um, cost versus budget in yeah. January? Okay. Any other further questions, comments, direction for them on that? All right, ready to move on to invoices? All right, uh, we have one invoice for approval this month um, under other outside of CTA for Signet of $22,000. Uh, I will move that we accept this invoice as presented. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Wood. Is there any questions for Mr. Lemieux on this? All right, all those in favor? Any opposed? All right, that carries unanimously. Uh, next item is CTA requisition number six. Um, our portion is $802,421.65. Are there any questions for Mr. Lemieux on this requisition? Okay, I'll move that we <coughs> accept requisition six <coughs> as presented. There's second. Second. Seconded by Mr. <coughs> Wood. Any further questions? All right, all those in favor? Any opposed? All right, that carries unanimously. Just a quick uh, point for you when we go back and forth on the uh, CPA portion of this alternate one that had no, no billing this mm -hmm. month. Um, that retainage likely won't be released and billed until later. Okay. So they're going to build their work in full when they finish it here, hopefully this month. But the reality is that the retainage on that work won't be released until yeah. May, June, July. So CPC is going to they hear from you and then they're not going to hear from you for months. Right. So we expect one that. more invoice next month for Probably. this? Probably, yeah. <coughs> retainage sometime middle of next year? Yeah. Okay. So late, late spring. I did uh, get a request from the CPC chair this afternoon to articulate how much we intended to spend, which I think is just bid price plus the one alternative for the handicap spots that they approved. Uh, I think she's working with Mr. Purple to identify what excess CPA funding may be available for other golf-related items. Okay. So I'll make sure that the numbers are right before we reply to that. Um, Next item is project budget update. I guess, John, I'll clarify for the community. What they received in their electronic packet is different than what they received in front of them. The only change is what you received in your electronic packet did not have the reclass from the golf, golf to items. public safety that right. we voted on at the last meeting. The, and those items on page two of the budget are noted at the right hand margin. Uh, <coughs> I guess I'll pause and see if there's um, any questions from the committee to John. And just for clarification, if everybody could just take a look at the front uh, front page, um, you can see column B, B1, and C. Um, we incorporated the $100,000 into the budget from the state grant. Um, so now instead of that change column always totaling to zero, it's going to always total to 100 uh, because that's more money that was put into the project. Uh, I just needed, needed you to see it. I didn't want the number to just increase and people not know where it came from. So Who decided to do that? He did. I did. Um, but let you me want ask me to put it somewhere else? Yeah. Well, I guess I have a question, and sure. this goes to what Kathy's saying. Is why do we have to put it in our budget? Why can't we just use it as a credit against our expenses? Because we're really not spending 22-7. Let's just say we were up against. Totally right. I just don't. That's not. I wanted to be transparent and show you how I so put so it. So my view is it shouldn't be in the budget. It should just be a credit to our invoices that we pay. We, I, I think it belongs. Nobody. I think it belongs at the end of the day when everything's said and done and you reconcile the whole project, oh, including the land purchase, to the town and say we paid this to the land, we paid this to the building, and then we got 100,000 bucks from the state, and this is what it net cost us. So I don't think it belongs. Well, the problem, so your thing is that grant was contingent on us actually you spend, offsetting you spend bills that we paid with this project. So oh, I didn't know that. So if, there was a context if, bill yeah, and there was... At, if you look at page three of the packet. Which means 
the bill. That's what yes, but we it's had to better. specify the town accountant. So the two orange cells in the middle are the two bills that were paid. Uh, you paid an entirety of the uh, NSTAR uh, gas main bill from uh, for sixty-eight thousand, right. and we paid the majority of a context bill for thirty-one seven fifty. It covered all but five hundred dollars of it, and that's why that that set of data is surrounded by that uh, bold bar there because it's really one invoice, but we've broken. Well, it what do you into mean payments. you paid? You, the check got deposited in the town's bank account, and then they pay bills, and you're just saying those two happen to total about a hundred thousand bucks. So we're going to say those were paid. Yeah, but if it was there, total to check the total is exactly hundred thousand dollars. Right, and those, yeah. and those, because those amounts to prove to the meet, state of what you spent that money on you meet yeah. the requirements of how you spend what's allocated. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And we had to spend it right within the certain period of time. So I, I see what you're saying, Kathy. You're saying I don't want to think we could spend that hundred thousand bucks. That's why, there, take, that's why I think you take. That's why I think you take it out of the budget. But it goes against your invoices. So I think at the end of the day, right? The presentation that we're going to make at the end of this thing is: here's what you authorized at town meeting. Here's what you spent on the land. Here's that extra sum of money that was spent on the land. And here's what came out of this specific committee uh, as expenses. I can take it out. There, there will be a number that we're turning back to the town, and then I think there's a, a secondary analysis that we're going to work with the finance team on is what that savings then did to your tax rate, right? In terms of le less interest, less principal, et cetera. So I think you get to that same goal by just removing it out of your budget and doing an invoice. I totally agree. All I'm trying to do is not let people think you've got another hundred thousand. I just don't want to see this eight hundred thousand dollars go up much more. Um, Actually, yeah. so. so right now, if yeah. you look on page four, I included it in the construction contingency. If you like, I can move it and put it in the bid saving block. So you can still see the increase to the budget, per se, but cause it, it's an extra hundred that wasn't here in the beginning. I understand using it to offset, but unless you have a town meeting where you're going to go move a hundred out of the job, I like seeing it because it's something else that came into the project. Well, let me throw it to you this started. way, John. Right, so let's just use context invoice yeah. as an example, right? We paid roughly. Thirty thousand dollars to them out of this grant, right? At the end of the day, the actual amount spent compared to their budget will be thirty thousand dollars less. We'll be able to see it that way. Okay. Right. So even though we pay them a total sum, you know, on paper, right, it's going to show thirty thousand less on this, just because. The, listen. The reality is, the other thing I can do is I could just add a separate line for state funding, take it out of the budget, show the two invoices tracked, and take them out of the expenditure calculation here as if it was paid from another account so we can keep it I'm fine with you I, either way as long as it's not in the budget you're, that's what I would like to see I think that's somewhat along the lines of what Kathy is saying I just get out of here completely um, we know we got 100,000 bucks um, I still want to know what context cost gross not net um, and I still so say you just you know you are so we'll leave it in there you know you have a hundred thousand more later than we yeah. have to do in the so final, like my reconciliation, final calculation land building that hundred thousand bucks from the state is important. This is what causes us to build this yeah. building. Okay. All right. I just wanted you to see it. Any other questions on that? All right. Um, so, from a meeting schedule perspective, uh, we are not scheduled to meet again until Monday, January fourteenth, um, and so we'll be on second Monday of every month, starting February, <coughs> March, April. Um, we had the townhouse reserved. Um, planning forgot to or didn't have their meetings in the book so they approached me about they have their planning board meetings in February March and April were supposed to be the same night as ours um, the reason we meet at the townhouse is because then it's a lot easier for Southwark Access Media to come and take the meetings which is at the request of the Board of Selectmen so the town planner uh, called me on multiple occasions to try to find some sort of uh, compromise. I said we're not going to change our meeting dates just because there was a lot of discussion that went into it. So her request was if we could start at six as opposed to six thirty. Um, our meetings we usually last about an hour and a half, so then they would post their meetings for seven thirty in the same room, which would obviously make it a lot easier for self or access media. I said I would approach the committee, and then let's just say we had a juicy agenda that was going to require more than an hour and a half, and I could see that coming a mile away we would just move locations like to here or to the senior center um, if that came about. So I guess what is the appetite of the committee about moving those particular, so we're talking February, March, and April up to six o'clock, so it's a half an hour earlier? 
or if you just want to play it by year and, and assess it every month, I'm fine with that too. Um, but I figured I'd point it out <coughs> two months in advance as opposed to a week in advance. I'm fine. Uh, I'm fine. Six o'clock is fine with me. Any objections to six? Who are the ones that have to get here from Boston? <coughs> <laughs> what are your no that six is fine Jeff's, Jeff's in traffic mm -hmm. regardless yeah. yeah I leave at three three thirty and get uh, here to get to the here? site yeah. well to beat the traffic it's I meet you with Kevin on site it still takes a little while but I'm, but I'm here then it's all good yeah. we're planning to be able to start a few minutes later to make 745 okay, we're making concessions to start early can we make concessions to start a little later well, they are because you start at seven, so they're going to seven thirty. Okay. And anyone that's watched a planning meeting knows usually go till. Yeah. Sometimes until the next those day. Those <laughs> <those. Yeah. laughs> yeah. I remember that. So, I guess what I'll do for now, hearing those strong objections, is I'll tell them that they can plan on seven thirty for that night, and then each month we'll reassess depending on what I see coming, and we'll move to here if we have to, um, to, to to find some sort of compromise or switch off or something like that. I told them we collaborate and figure it out but I didn't see any sense in trying to reschedule because then we'll be competing with selectmen, advisory, conservation, it just would be yeah. one committee after another. Good on that? Yeah. Uh, any other business? Alright, with that yeah. I'll move to One item. Go ahead Chief. I'd like to recognize <coughs> Sergeant Pete Goodney who informed me that he'll be hanging him up after what 32 years? 32 years, uh, very shortly, in the next week or two? 14. <laughs> and, uh, and then, uh, he also yeah, served on a... More time for public yeah, safety, yeah, so I, I have to come here on time. <laughs> yeah, so he, I know he also served on the committee yeah. in 2000, what? 2010. 2010, and this one, so he's put a lot of time in. But he also said that he'll be a little bit bored, so if you have any uh, side lights yeah. or... Or anything, I'm sure he'd be happy to take it out. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. My resume for everybody, too. <laughs> <laughs> With that, I'll move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays.